As an American favorite to both watch and play, football is played in high school, college, and beyond. But should such a dangerous sport be allowed in high school when it can cause so much damage? I strongly believe that football should not be allowed in high school. Although I do not play sports or watch them, I have been studying up the effects on, of football on, on the health of the players. There are several different effects of football, and I believe that these must be understood completely in order to have a player actually play. This, I believe, would limit it to the adult years of someone's life. So, what are these consequences and disabilities that follow a time of playing? The first main point I would like to put across is head slash cranial damage. As someone who has had several con concussions, it astonishes me that someone would not turn in the fact that they had a concussion. Um, so what is a concussion? According to CDC, a concussion is a type of traumatic brain injury, or TBI, caused by a bump, blow, or a jolt to the head, or by a hit to the body that causes the head and brain to move rapidly back and forth. This sudden movement can cause the brain to bounce around or twist in the skull, creating chemical changes in the brain and sometimes stretching and damaging brain cells. How often are concussions received in high school football? In a survey done by the American Journal of Sports Medicine, around 5.1% of the surveyed high school and college football players received one concussion in a season, and about 14.7% of those received a second concussion. Potentially worse than a concussion is subdural hematoma. What exactly is sub subterminal hematoma? hematoma? According to Medical Plus, a subdural hematoma is a collection of blood between the coverings of the brain, dura, and the surface of the brain. Subdermal hematoma is considered one of the deadliest of head injuries. Symptoms include confusion, slurred speech, balance problems, headache, energy loss, seizures, coma, nausea, vomiting, vision weakness, vision problems, weakness, and numbness. If those symptoms and potential for death don't scare you enough, maybe the treatment for these will. Medical Plus says emergency surgery may be needed to reduce and relieve pressure on the brain. This may involve drilling a whole small hole in the brain in the skull to draw, uh, drain any blood and relieve pressure on the brain. Large hematomas or solid blood clots may need to be removed through a procedure called craniotomy, craniotomy, which creates a larger opening in the skull. Brain and head damage are only the beginning of injuries that can damage the growing teenager's life. Football can also cause knee injuries. About 20% of all football players have knee injuries. Oh, sorry, about 20% of all football in injuries are knee injuries. These injuries can include ligament tears, torn cartilage, fractures, dislocations, tendon tears, tendon ruptures, and contusions. What are the treatments for these injuries? About 40% of all knee injuries created in high school football have to have surgery at some point. Other knee injuries could cause arthritis in the knee if not taken care of properly. Some injuries require physical therapy and rehab for somewhere between 9 and 12 months. So why would somebody want to do this? Well, another injury common to football players are spinal cord injuries. Spinal injuries are very dangerous and not just found in adults, which is a common belief, but it's found in teenagers as well. According to SpinalCord.com, 10% of all SCIs, or spinal cord injuries, come from sports and athletic activities. Furthermore, 10-15% to 15 of all football players, especially linemen and defensive players, experience cervical spine injuries. When do these Spinal injuries occur. These spinal injuries occur in tackling and blocking maneuvers. Spinal cord injuries, head injuries, and knee injuries are just the beginning of why football should not be allowed in high school. In conclusion, I have discussed head injuries such as concussions and subdermal hematoma, knee injuries, and sp spinal injuries. I hope I have helped you see why I believe 
that football should not be allowed in high school, where they tend to not care as much about the consequences or potential life setbacks.